Jesus always was. He didn't become Lord when he came in the flesh. He always was. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit always were. Okay? And so we need to acknowledge that. Some people think that, uh, well, you're going to find out today as King David is referring to Lord. And so Jesus had that title before he came on this earth. The Son has a job, the Father has a job, the Holy Spirit has a job. Always was from the beginning. The Bible is true, everything in it. Even though most of it is ignored by the body of Christ, even today. When we need it the most, Guys, that shouldn't be so. It shouldn't be so. We are so blessed that when we became saved, we made a, a vow to God to give Jesus lordship of our life. That means he calls the shots. But how easy it is for us to forget that vow. And it's our sin nature that wants to grab the reins and guide our own lives when we're destined for failure spiritually if we do that. We can't do it. But He can do all things, right? And so, first of all, maybe right now, you should do some analyzing of your commitment because it took a commitment to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus just to be saved. If you didn't make that commitment, you're not saved. The beauty of this thing is, is you can become saved at any minute, even though you may have thought you were for 25, 30 years or more. You know, don't get this one wrong. I think that you've been here long enough to know what the consequences of that choice being wrong is. Hell is forever. Forever. Guys, don't let your friends get this one wrong. Your job as an ambassador of Christ is to represent him to everyone around you. Everyone around you. Don't get it wrong, man. God places people in your lives so that you will have an opportunity to show them, not just tell them, but to reveal Jesus by how you live. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. You know? The joy of the Lord is your strength. And not only that, it is your witness. Don't run around like you've been baptized in lemon juice. Come on, man. We need to be something that we want others to become. Right? And so, keep that in mind when we're out there, even in stressful situations. How are other people looking at us as far as those Christians over there? You know? Sometimes we fall short. When someone is finished with, an, with an, a, a meeting with you in public, would they want to come to your church? That should be part of the things you talk about. You know? I mean, this is not our mission. Our mission's out there. This is where we come every week lick our wounds get loved on and sent again out there to get beat up by this world this world is not our world this is not our home we are foreigners in it but we've been sent to reach it how are we doing 
everybody is just as important as everybody else. We're all going to the same heaven. Our jobs here are going to end here. You know, I'm not going to the pastor's part of heaven. You know, it don't it don't have that. It, it's not like that, guys. We're going to heaven together. And you know, I don't really fully understand store up for yourselves riches in heaven. All I know is it's true. And God has given us this command that as we live here on earth, as we're representing him, we are storing up for ourselves riches in heaven. It's going to have an eternal effect. I don't, I don't know what it's going to be, although I like stuff. You know, let's get real. I like stuff. And so I'm looking forward to, to what the difference is to somebody that just squeezes in. You know, a, a bedside prayer at the end of their life versus someone who has served him their whole life. I meet on Mondays with a group of men that have served him since they were teenagers. Why they love on me and accept me in that group, I don't know, but they're in their 80s and 90s and they love me to pieces. I'm different than they are. But in their eyes, we're all the same. We're brothers in Christ. So, guys, I want you to think about, about your relationship with the Lord Jesus. Are you committed to Him? It's between you and Him. It ain't between me and you. I, I just teach you what the Bible says. Hopefully, some scriptures will have a new meaning when I present them to you, you know. This is not just a book you just read, read, read. I mean, it's for us, man, together. So, if you need to do business right now, it takes a couple of seconds. Repent them. There's no forgiveness of sin without repentance. The Bible's clear on that, right? So let's just get her done. He wants us. He knows all about us, you know. And he wants to hear from us. So, let's get that part of our life right. So he will use us. The 23rd Psalm. I love the 23rd Psalm. To most people, it's just something to memorize. But to me, it has meaning. Deep meaning. And, you know, I've been talking to you guys a lot about... Uh, people in the Bible who were less than faithful. But God used them anyway. And there's some uh, in there that were way less than faithful. And God used them anyway. You know? I mean, we just finished Jonah. <laughs> Talk about less than faithful. That dude was less than faithful. And God used him to reach the city of Nineveh. And he didn't want to go. He went, both heels dug in, didn't want to go. God took him there, right? King David. Wow. You think, man, God would have slammed the door on that dude and used him to write many of the Psalms. Used him to write this one. What a life. King David had, you know? Shepherd tends the flock. God refers to us many times in, in Scripture as sheep because we need to follow the shepherd, the great shepherd. We need to have tunnel vision on him like sheep have on their shepherd. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. And they, they know when something comes along that's not the shepherd's voice, just like the prophets of old, they knew God's voice and they listened. The sheep hear the shepherd's voice. We need to listen. We do.
everything is based on the Lord. You surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. He governs our lives. Uh, he sent the Holy Spirit to be inside of us. Go figure that one out. All I know is God said it. That's it. To everyone in this room that's saved, the Holy Spirit is living in here. I don't understand. The person of the Holy Spirit is living in here. I figure that's why I'm so big. There's two of us, right? I can justify it any way I want, but okay. So, the 23rd Psalm, David starts out by saying, the Lord. He's talking about the, uh, the job of Jesus in the Old Testament. The Lord is my shepherd. Can we all say that in here? Can we? Lord is my shepherd. Is. That's, that's a right now thing, not an Old Testament thing or anything else. It is now. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our shepherd. We read scripture so that we will be familiar with his voice. People ask me all the time, I wish I know, I wish I knew what God wanted for my life. Are you listening to him? He reveals himself in his, in his word, you know. And guys, we need to be continually reading his word because if it were not so, we could read it once and not have to use it again. How many of you taught your kids once and they got it? The Holy Scriptures are real and vivid and alive and teaching us until we are old and we've read it a thousand times. New stuff every time is revealed to us. So King David in all his shortcomings is saying, Jesus is my shepherd. I shall not be in want of any temporary thing. We will have what we need to fulfill the calling that's got on our lives individually. God's not going to give us a task to do. Uh, he's not going to tell us to live out this Christian life and not give us what we need to sustain life. And so, I shall not be in want. I tell you, man, isn't that a good place to be in? Knowing that if... If it's God's will, it's God's bill. And we don't need to worry about stuff. God knows our needs. I want to tell you, you'll be blessed according to your dedication to the Lord Jesus. We hate the O word. Obedient. I use that all the time when I'm talking to Judy, just so we'll laugh together. Because it's something that we don't want to hear, right? Women don't want to hear that either. But we have fun with it. But Judy's a godly woman. I depend on her. She is my help meet here on earth. We're a team. God gave her to me for such a time as this. She needs to be with her mama right now. I need to fully support her in that. We need to fully support her in that. Praying for her. Amen? Verse 2. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, what do green pastures mean to a sheep? Grub. Yeah. 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 Needs being met. Give me that green stuff. And I like it better on the other side, right? It ain't no better. But he meets our needs. I love this. He leads me beside quiet waters. Rest and quietness. 
and, and most of us won't get enough of that. Right? A sheep will not drink out of a running stream. They, the water has to be still for them to drink out of. This next one's great, man. It's amazing what our Lord does for us. He restores my soul. From when we fall short, when we backslide, He restores us. If we ask Him. And He, and he is, never says no. If we come to Him. He guides me in paths of righteousness. Because we can't do it ourselves. Because we're not righteous without Him. So He has to take the lead and guide us in paths of righteousness for His namesake, for His glory. Because all the glory goes to Him. Not to us. Isn't it great that we can live our lives in such a way that bring glory to our Savior. Think about what he did, man. You know. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though we as humans fear the grave, it's unsure, right? I don't fear it. Because I know the I know the Lord. I couldn't care less about the grave. But it's because of his work in me, in you. It says, I will fear no evil. Either Satan himself, the evil one, or evil people. We don't fear either one. <laughs> because of who we belong to. For you are with me. You are our shepherd. The one who would never steer us wrong. You are our shepherd. <laughs> right now. Your rod and your staff. They comfort me and correct me. You know, isn't it good that the Bible is not just to teach us about him, but it's to bring correction to us. We need correction. We're imperfect people. Don't try to make people outside this building think that you're a perfect person. Because then they'll feel like they have no hope. Oh, I got to be perfect like that guy? No. They're going to watch you fall down and then get back up. It's the way life is, man. It says here, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Others see God working in us. We have enemies. This world is full of enemies of Christianity. Full of them. But God sets us in a place where they can look at us as set apart. And I tell you guys, if we're doing this thing right, they're going to want what you got. They're going to want what you got. Joy. Everyone seeks peace, but they're not willing to go after the right shepherd. You anoint my head with oil. Remember the woman anointing Jesus' head with oil and wiping his feet with her tears, loving on him. He loves on us. He loves. He loves on us, guys. <laughs> My cup overcome, oh, overflows with blessings that sustain me and with spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings. Because of him. Because of our commitment to him. It all works together. You don't reward your, reward your kids for doing wrong. No. You bring correction. And you reward them when they do right. 
Verse 6 is just awesome. Surely goodness and love will follow me. What's in your wake? Right? What's behind you? Surely love and goodness will follow me all the days of my life. That I'm surrendered to him. See, it, it, everything is based on our surrender to Jesus. And guess what, guys? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Get used to me. I'm going to be there with you forever. This is a family that will never divide. Our heavenly family. Right? Let's bring as many people with us as we can. Right? I mean, let's don't go out there and talk with our holy voice. There's so many pastors make me sick when they, oh, yes. We're just regular folks, guys. Let's be regular folks out there. Let's invite people. But really, it doesn't matter if they come here or go to some other church, as long as it's a Bible-believing church. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your, your word. There is nothing incorrect about your word. You have provided us with the great shepherd. Jesus, we love you. Father, I, I pray that you would instill in us a desire to be fully committed and surrendered to your son. And Father, as, as we're coming to the close of this part of our service, Father, I pray for the offering, God, that once again, it will stay, sustain us for another week. Father, you know the additional expenses that are coming in, in maintaining uh, this property, Father. We're the ones that pay for it. You're the one that blesses us with the ability to pay for it. So, Father, I pray that uh, you'd bless this church financially, uh, that we can grow, that our, our influence would be well beyond the doors of this building. And also, Father, as we're going to eat together, Lord, uh, what an exciting time it is that when we get together every Sunday, we get to love each other and laugh together, sometimes cry together. But you are in our midst, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for that. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.